Hey, welcome to Airplay. I'm Connie Keffinger. Today's play is a short, unusual, yet poignant piece by Shirley King. It's called Blinking in the Treetops. Shirley King's plays have been performed in the US, Canada, and the United Kingdom and Korea. In 2015, 18 of her plays and monologues were selected for production. And in 2016, 12 of her plays and monologues were selected. So she's a busy little bee. No wonder she's looking at those treetops. Reading with us today is Christy Donahue. Hi, Christy. Hi, Connie. Tell us a little bit what you're up to since we saw you last. She's one of our airplay regulars. Yeah. Um, finally um, wrapped production on a web pilot that will hopefully be more than that called The Misadventures of Brooke and Carly and doing a lot of comedy dinner theater. And uh, that's it. That's been keeping me busy. Cool. And Christy brought on a new member for our airplay on air players, Frank Chavon. Frank. Tell us a little bit about yourself and welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Um, this is really exciting to be a part of this project. Um, I haven't been doing much lately, just um, playing a lot of music and uh, I play uh, jazz trombone and um, play with a couple of jazz groups in the New Haven area right now. Um, but uh, so I kind of put my acting on a, on a back burner, but um, thank you for having me back. Sure, sounds great. Well, without further ado, we're gonna slip into today's show. Like I said, it's short and sweet and it's a very cool little play. Blinking on the Treetops was produced as a radio script by the River City Radio Hour, the Wayne Theater Alliance, Waynesboro, Virginia, by Spokane Radio Theater, and by Iowa City Circle Acting Company. This production of Blinking in the Treetops was produced by the Thespian Productions in Fort Myers, Florida for their We Mean to be Green Ecology Festival and again produced in 2014 and 15 by Thespian Production in New York. It was also produced in the United Kingdom by Tin Can Podcast. So here we go. Blinking in the Treetops by Shirley King. The characters are Tom, read by Frank Chavon, Firefly, hoping to find a mate. Sam, read by me, Connie Kepfinger, a firefly looking for love, but hoping to become a dentist or a poet. Gloria, Firefly, seeking a mate with no time to waste. Fireflies who live only a fortnight dare not waste time finding love. Blinking in the Treetops was produced by the Seoul Players, Seoul, Korea. This version was also produced in the United Kingdom. As we begin, we hear some interesting sounds. Look, see those blank sand. No, I don't. Oh, now I do. I see blinking in the treetops. What does that mean? Female fireflies blink on the soft summer grass in this garden. Those in trees are male fireflies, just like us. Then why are we down here, Tom? <laughs> we emerge too late. Look closely. It seems like every branch was taken. So when a female firefly blinks, you're saying this could be a good thing? She has no wings. So? So, what else can we do but remain in the grass, blinking for a mate? And here we are. Ready and willing. Are you ready and willing, Sam? I am totally looking for love. Love? <laughs> oh, not so fast. I don't think female fireflies know the L word. Well, frankly, I have heard some rumors. 
rumors that female fireflies sometimes uh, devour their mates. No! I hope she will not devour me. Are you two going to talk all night? I've no time for frivolous conversation. Who said that? Gloria. Think longer and faster, and I may very well choose you for my mate. Gloria, uh, you won't devour me, will you? Why would I devour the father of my children? Blink, 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 blink. longer and faster. Uh, uh, do you find me uh, attractive, Gloria? Not really. Perhaps we could be friends. Next, time is of the essence. Gloria, are you sure you're not the fire me? Honestly, why such a scaredy fly? Why do we live only to produce more fireflies? I would like to live for another reason. I I'd like to become a dentist. <laughs> oh, a firefly cannot become a dentist, Sam. Our brains are very small. You know, they don't allow for rational thought or dentistry. Oh, then I could become a poet with initials or, or three or four names like T.S. Eliot or Edna St. Vincent Millay. <laughs> but T.S. Eliot and Edna St. Vincent Millay are no longer with us, uh, Sam. Did Gloria devour them? Well, Sam, well, let's face it. Our days are numbered, like the canary in the coal mine. What? How can that be? We seldom go to cities now. Do you know why? Pollution has driven us away. Ah, we're an early warning signal. You got it. All things considered, I think the symbol in here is too much to bear. I would rather just be a poetic firefly looking for love. Well, you know, uh, Gloria may not have teeth. That would make it harder for her to devour you. Really? Gloria, if I become a dentist, I would give you a lovely set of teeth. You are out of your blinking mind. No, I have just begun to blink. Blink, blink, blink. Look, I am blinking, 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 insanely blinking. But I guess you do not find me attractive, Gloria. Can we get on with this? Those trees should be alive with the glow of blinking. Where are all the other male fireflies? Yeah, perhaps uh, they just wish to be friends. For love, I would all misgivings break. Yet I hold back, if only for thy sake. Lovely. Don't stop me now, fireflies, ye living lamps, by whose dear light the nightingale doth sing so late, etc., etc. Uh, you know, uh, Sam, uh, we're doomed anyway. Uh, fireflies only have two weeks to live. Two weeks? How can that be? It is what it is. This saddens me. Gloria, no secrets, all right? Secrets? Me? I right, confess, you killed your last mate. Possibly. How? Gloria, by blasting him with lethal rays of your abdomen? If I tell you, I may have to kill you. But I must know. Why, Gloria? He called me a beetle. But we are pretty beetles. In the beginning, yes. But in summer, we become fireflies, lighting the sky in a brilliant bonanza of brightness. What about glowworms? Uh, shine little glowworm glimmer glimmer? Stop! I cannot imagine loving a worm. I believe we are sometimes called lightning bugs. Lightning bugs? <laughs> How revolting. I ask you, who could possibly love a lightning bug? And uh, we're only about the size of a paper clip. Your point is? I don't believe he has one. Does everything need to have a point? When your days are numbered, yes. Are we totally, actually completely sure the fatal number is exactly two weeks or a fortnight? You know, in some languages, there is no fortnight. The Sanskrit word paksha indicates that we are fated to live either 14 or 15 solar days. They couldn't decide? I fear many of us will perish sooner. 
You'll make your move, Sam. Meaning you're eager to take me as your mate? Julie, I am stoked. Don't worry about a courtship. No time for roses and candy grams. We will speed date. Candy grams? Now what happened to worms, snails, and slugs? Don't you remember? We ate those as beetles, but now, oh my God, I just said the B word. I warned you. No, ho, ho. no your fate is sealed. All right, it is what it is. I understand I am ready to meet my Paksha. Now, even if you suddenly die without ever becoming a dentist or a poet with three or four names? Yes. For I believe our mission in life is, Gloria, what is our mission in life? Loving each other. The L word. She said the L word. Just long enough to create a new generation of fireflies lighting the skies in a dazzling display of pyrotechnics. All right, Sam, are you ready? Good luck, my friend. Go for it. Okay, my candle burns at both ends. It may not be the last night, but ah, oh, my foes and ah, oh, my friends, it gives a lovely light. Gloria, here I come. The end. Thank you, readers. Love, this little ditty should shed a little light on all of us. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.